Again in verse 19. Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and we have heard. Back over in the book of Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9 says Then I said I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name but his word was in my heart as a burning fire Shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing. And I could not stay. Yet the thoughts of your mind, serving God with the what? Passion. And empowered to endure.
serving God with a passion empowered to endure. The Bible said, whatever your hands find to do, do it with your might. That means you ought to put everything into whatever you do, and the reason you ought to is because that's what God's word said. Everything you do, you ought to go all out and do it and do it well. The scriptures say that everything God did, amen, was good and very good. God is Expect that you follow that same example in whatever you do. Whatever you do, you ought to do it well. That the name of the Lord ought to be glorified. For Jesus said, let your light so shine before me that they may see your what? good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Whatever you do, the Bible teaches, do with everything you got. Do it with everything you got. But do realize, amen, in being a servant of God, serving God ain't for the weak. Is that right? Amen. Serving God is not for the weak. And the reason it's not for the weak, amen, because Jesus said, hey, you're going to catch hell on your way to heaven. In the world, you should have tribulations. Hmm? But be of good cheer, for I have overcome. Ministry is not for the weak, but it is for the meek. To be meek means to be submissive. And if you're going to be a true servant of God, you must be submissive to the will of God for your life. And if you don't know the will of God, it's called the Word of God. The Word of God is the written, revealed will of God. And so many people pass are praying to discover the will of God for my life. He wrote it in your book. When you read it, you will find out what God desires of you. Michael 6 and 8 said, He has shown me, O oh man, what is good. What does the Lord thy God require me but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with the Lord thy God? When you are in ministry, amen, realize everybody ain't going to like you. There's somebody out there who cannot stand you, and his name is Satan. Amen. Satan's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan, amen, wants to kill your faith. He wants to steal your joy, amen. He don't want you to have no hope in God. He don't want you to find help in God. Satan wants you to be miserable. Satan wants you to be suicidal. Satan just wants you to ball up in a ball and, and not do anything, be a nothing and a nobody. That's what the devil wants. And if you listen to him, that's exactly how your life will go. But in the text, in the book of Jeremiah, we have the man of God, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was given a directive from God to preach his word in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1. God said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you or ordained you a prophet unto the nation. That's what God told Jeremiah. Before you were born, I already knew you were going to preach my word. But down there also in chapter 1, God told Jeremiah, you're going to preach to some folk who are not going to want to hear a word. Come on, Jeremiah. He said, they shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail. Is that what the text said? But God also said, but I am with you to deliver you. Even though your ministry might be hard, even though your ministry may have a bunch of haters in it, God will keep you if you want to be kept. You are empowered to endure. Jeremiah found out that God was true. Jeremiah, man, got tired in the work. He got tired, man, because serving God can be painful. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 2, the Bible teaches that Jeremiah was beat up and locked up. When you serve God with everything you've got in you, some folk are going to want to fight you. Some folk, amen, are going to want to slap you. Some folk, amen, are going to want to hurt you. And some folk will want to kill you. When you serve God with everything you've got in you, it can be painful. And you must make up your mind that this is what God desires and this is 
what you're going to commit to doing. The reason why the Bible said it's better to serve the Lord than put confidence in, confidence in man. The scripture teaches us that man can only kill the body, but God can kill the body and soul and cast it into hell. Can't nobody do you like Jesus can. But man who is unregenerate, man who is full of hell, man who is full of the devil, that might try to hurt you. But you are empowered to endure. Serving God not only can be painful, serving God can be lonely. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, verse 10, Jeremiah, amen, felt forsaken by his family. Jeremiah felt forsaken by his friends. When you give your all to the master, some folk who used to hang with you don't want nothing to do with you no more. When you give your all to the master, some folk who used to be your friend will turn to be your foe. When you give your best to the master, look like you find the whole world is against you. Jeremiah said in chapter 20, verse 10, he said, For I heard that the same of men folk were scandalizing him and criticizing him. He said, Fear on every side. And they said, Report. They were mocking Jeremiah. He was just trying to do God's will. When you do God's will, you will find that folk will mock you. They will mock your faith. They will mock your trust in God. They will call you a fool for believing God's word. And the only reason they do that is because the Bible said a fool has said in their heart, there ain't no God. In other words, they don't believe God like you believe him. Jeremiah said, Jeremiah said, now look, look, all my familiars, all the people I used to hang with, all of my family, they watching for me to fail. That's what the scripture said. All my familiars watch for my heartache. They wanted me to give up. They wanted me to turn around. They wanted me to quit. Imagine how you feel. All the people that you used to hang with, they're not hanging with you no more. They're watching for you to give up. They're watching for you to turn around. They're watching for you to fall apart. When you are in this work, when you are truly serving God from your heart, some folk, amen, do not want you to succeed. Some folk will undermine you to try to make sure you fail. Some folk will try to set you up to call you out. Some folk will try to set you up to shame you. The text said, Brother Jeremy, they said perhaps he will be entire. They're trying to set him up. We shall prevail against him. We shall take our revenge on him. Look at that. That's their revenge. All that Jeremiah was doing is what God told him to do. And folk was taking it personal. They believed that Jeremiah was trying to be evil against them. But all he was doing was preaching to them the word of God. When you do the master's will, you will find out that some folk will not believe you because they don't believe God. But you are empowered to endure. What a friend we have in Jesus, all of our sin and grief to that. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. That is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And the Bible said a friend of it all the time. Thank God for a friend like Jesus. When the whole world is against you, as long as you got Jesus on your side, you got everything you need. Why? Right? Because the Bible said if God be for you, who can be against you? Serving God can not only be painful, it can not only be lonely. Serving God can be discouraging. It can be discouraging on this Christian journey, trying to help folk who need help, but they don't want help. Huh? Trying to help folk who think they're all right and don't know they're on the way to hell. Because sin has blinded their minds. Huh? They think they're on the way to heaven. Huh? Everybody that dies is not going to heaven. None but the righteous 
shall see God. But there are some folk, amen, they got some religion and, and they'll tell you, Pastor, I pray all the time. And how do you think that you're going to live in a mansion in glory when you can't stand even to be in the house of God? How are you going to pass by the house of God and think that God done prepared a place for you in glory when you ain't got time for him on earth? How do you think, amen, that you're going to go to glory, amen, just because you pray, but you never obey? It's one thing to pray. If you're praying and praying right, you will obey the will and the word of God. But if you're praying and you're still out there walking like the devil, talking like the devil, acting like the devil, your prayer is in vain. So the Bible said, if I don't, if I don't respect his word, he will not hear me. God regard iniquity in my heart. In other words, I love sin more than I love God. Your prayer ain't doing nothing for you. Jeremiah found out that serving God, but the power can be discouraging. Look at verse 7 and verse 8. Jeremiah said, Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. Sometimes when we get discouraged, we lose sight of what's really going on in our life. One thing God will do, he'll never trick you. If you go back and read chapter 1, you'll see that God told him, son, you're going to suffer in this ministry. But sometimes, while God is talking to us, we got our mind made up for something else. Can I get a witness? Sometimes God will promise us a blessing, and the blessing may come like we want it. Uh, we wanted one thing, but he gave us something else. And, and we'll feel like, well, God asked for this, but you gave me that. The reason why he gave you that, because that's what you really what needed. Some folks say, Lord, I, I want some money, but God ain't trying to give you some money. He's trying to give you some wisdom. You know why? Because if you make it rich and you ain't got no wisdom, you're still going to be broke. But if God gives you wisdom, he can give you a little bit of money. You still have all your needs supplied. That don't sound like Somebody praying for somebody to walk this road of life with. Amen. But the person that you're praying about or that you're looking at ain't no good for you. You're praying for somebody that belongs to somebody else. You ought to pray for somebody that will love you like you deserve to be loved. Too often we ask God for stuff that we really do not need. So Jeremiah said, God, you trick me. But God don't trick people. But I understand how I my felt because I felt like that. Sometimes it looked like a door was open to you and you go through the door and, and look like the door got what? Closing your face. And sometimes God just used that door to teach you. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sometimes we're saying, Lord, I'm willing to wait. But that's what we say with our lips. But our heart is saying something else. I want my blessing what? Right now. God told Abraham that you're going to have a son. And then his wife got tied away. Am I right? Sarah got tied away. And Sarah gave uh, uh, Abraham Hagar. And then Hagar had a child. And now Hagar is mocking Sarah. Now, now Sarah mad at Abraham. But look here, uh, Sarah. Uh, Abraham then called the problem. You didn't wait on God. And when you try to fix it yourself, it blew up in your face. The Bible teaches now, if you got a problem, take it to the Lord in prayer. If you're going to try to fix that problem yourself, you're going to make a bigger mess than it already was. Stand still to see the salvation of the Lord. Can the Lord shall fight this battle, but you got to learn how to hold your peace. The text said, the text said, he said, I'm in the region daily. They, they talking about me. They criticizing me. Uh, a lot of folks want to make the decision for the pastor. But they don't want to be the pastor. Uh, they want the power. Uh, but they don't want all the stuff that go with the power. Uh, because you got to deal with all the people. And some folks like you and some folks can't stay. Some folks say, I can take it and I can what? I can leave. That's what folks say. And you still got to come in here and you got to you still got to preach 
through the word of God. You got to pray for them and when they need something amen, that you can help them with, you got to go see about them. Even though they just wrote your name on the sign, Lord. They talked about your family. They, they went and scandalized, put your name out in the street, but when they need something, they're going to call you. And you can't cut them out. Why? Because that ain't your calling. You got to go see about them. Why? Because they still belong to the Lord. And some folk, amen, you put them on your prayer list and you put them on your, you calling God to bless them and bless their family that every day they're cursing you out behind your back. And Guess what? You still got to do what God called you to do. Some folk want to be in the position, but they don't want all the hell that comes with the position. Jeremiah said, I look at all. They talk about me every day. Jeremiah was discouraged. He said, I, 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 I'm trying to do what you told me to do. I'm preaching the word that you told me to preach. These folk don't want to hear it. They want another message. He said, For since I spoke, I cried out, violence is war. Become the word of God. Was made a reproach unto me. Jeremiah said, Because I preach the word of God, talk is scandalized to me. Because I declare what thus said the Lord, the dead and folk, what they don't want to hear, they think I'm mad at them, they think I'm mean, they don't I think I don't know what I'm talking about. And Jeremiah was disturbed. And sometime on this journey, you are going to be discouraged. The thing I like about God, if God calls you to it, God will help you through it. Huh? If God calls you to do it, God will help you get it done. And see, that's the beautiful thing about the Lord. There is good news despite Jeremiah's pain. There is good news despite his loneliness. There is good news despite his being discouraged. And it's right there in verse number nine. Jeremiah got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so he had his own plan. And sometimes when we get tired of waiting on God, we're going to try to hatch our own plan. And we said the Lord must not, amen, heard of me the first time. Or the Lord must not want me to have this thing. And so you know what we're trying to do? We're going to go to the bank and see if he can work something out. And what we're going to do, we're going to pay too much. We're going to run on to the doctor without calling on Jesus. We're going to find out the doctor don't even know what's going on with you. They that wait upon the Lord, the Bible says they shall renew their strength. But sometimes we get ahead of God. And Jeremiah, amen, got tired of being talked about. He got tired of being criticized. And I need you to understand, his pastors leave in churches now because they're tired of preaching to folk who don't want to hear what the Lord gave them to say. They're tired of trying to leave folk who don't want to do nothing, don't want to go nowhere. And it's preaching not only leaving the church, some of them commit suicide. Why? Because they lost sight of what's most important. What's most important is not how the people treat you, but how God treated you. Anybody can thank God that even on your worst day, that God still been good to you. Gave you movement and activity in your limbs. Gave you sight in your eyes. Gave you a heartbeat on your worst day. When it looked like everything falling apart. As long as there's a God sitting on the throne, he's able to bring it back together.
criticize, tired of trying to help folks that's hurting me. But something that happened down on the inside. And something that keeps telling me to Larry just go on ahead. And that's what Jeremiah found out, amen, in the text. He said, but his word, his word, Jeremiah was empowered to endure by the word of God. Sister Over Street, in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 63, the Bible said, The Spirit gives life. Did I what Jesus said? He said, The Spirit gives life. The flesh don't count for nothing. That's what Jesus said. The words I have spoken unto you. They are full of the spirit and they are full of life. You can be almost to your deathbed and hear the word of God and laugh and find out. You can be dead, but when the word of God is coming forth, laugh with God out that grave and we're walking and talking like a natural man. So when you're feeling beat down by life, just remember I got some power that don't come from me. I got some power that don't come from my mama. I got some power that didn't come from my daddy. I got some power that come from on high. What did Jesus say? After the Holy Ghost will come upon you, you shall receive power and you shall be my witness. Anybody got a witness? If you got a witness, you ought to be sharing your testimony. You ought to tell folk how God brought you over. You ought to tell them how brought you through. You got to tell them how he brought you. When you couldn't carry yourself, ain't you glad that when you feel like giving up, David said, Lord, restore my soul. Anybody ever pray that prayer? You were all tired. Look like there was no reason to go on. But Lord, restore my soul. When you you ask God to restore your soul, you get the power down on the end. They'll show up on the outside. And Jeremiah said that word was like power, but it wasn't simply the word. It was the word that was empowered by the Spirit of God. If you want to know read the Bible, I wrote the Bible. I hear so many folks say a man wrote the Bible, but the Bible said both the men of God wrote, and they were moved by the Spirit. Can't you see the Spirit working in the beginning? The Bible said the Spirit of God, He moved upon the waters. And if you get in the wheel, He'll move on you. He'll keep you in His wheel. And He'll keep you in His way. The Word of God. Yeah. 
can do what nobody else can. I'm empowered to endure job loss. Empowered to endure. Got more bills and money. Empowered to endure. Do y'all hear me? Enemies on my trail. Empowered to endure. Been in sin and been in shame. Empowered to endure. Ain't perfect, but still empowered to endure. Where you at? Who you is? If you're a Christian, I don't care what hell you've been doing. What hell are you going through right now? If God says He's going to keep you, He's going to keep you. Over oh, in the book of Psalm 121, the text says, The Lord is my keeper. He is the shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. That's what the text said. God is your keeper. Can't nobody take you out when God is the one keeping you in. Let him talk about you. Y'all hear what Peter said? It's not my cause to judge. What would it be right according to you? I can't do nothing but speak what I've seen and speak what I've heard. And you know what they did? They beat Peter in the boat. They beat him. But you know what they did? They praised God and kept on preaching. Huh? When folk talk about you, praise God and keep on being a witness. When they lie on you, praise God and keep on being a witness. When they scandalize you, praise God and keep on being a witness. Can't nobody stop you if God is for you. The devil can't even take you out. Uh, he came but still kill him the strong, but he can't take you from God. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me, and nobody can pluck them out of my hands. Death can't even take you. The devil not say, God got control over death. Death may be on your tracks right now. And guess what it is? Because the Bible says this what? It is a point to man what wants to die. He ain't come to judgment. Your death is on your tracks. But you can't leave, not when death says so. Because God will want to control death. You can't leave here that God says it's time for you to go. So guess what? Be the truth. You really ain't got nothing to worry about. You really ain't got nobody to worry about. God, if God is your everything, what you worried for? You ain't got to worry about the economy one day. Huh? Hello? You ain't got to worry about the coming on that. My God shall supply all your what? You need know what the text said. As long as you got some faith, right? According to what? His riches and glory not what's in your bank account. Look! Look, you be by yourself and surrounded by your enemies. You ain't got to worry about them. What y'all do is preach to them. Y'all better leave me alone. Touch not my what? Anointed. Do my what? Prophet no harm. You know what? God will make your enemy your what? Footstool. Fight! You got a giant want to fight you? Huh? You got a giant want to fight you? They were a little old teammates. You know what they did? He took that giant down. You know why? Because he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I'm not coming in the name of my mom. I'm not coming in the name of my dad. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. And they were killed. That giant cut his head off. You got some snakes in your life. You need to cut their head off. Huh? What you worried about? Who messing with you? Who talking about you? They don't know who they're fooling with. What you gotta do is keep the main thing the main thing. It's all about Jesus. Folks can talk about me. They can lie all the time. You should chase down and lie. I don't chase down and lie no more. You know why? Because God knows all about me. What they got to do worry about them? They don't have no heaven or what? Hell put me in. So I stop worrying about what folks say. I used to go and straight and lie. Don't, don't lie, baby. Don't lie. Because you is what? Who you is. What a liar do? They lie. And I, when I read in the book of Revelation, I 
I heard that if they keep on lying, they're going to mess around with us and what? Wow, I don't know what the text said. They're going to have their friends to the Bible say, in the lake that burned with fire and brimstone. So he want me to have pity on that life. He want me to have pity on that gospel. Why? They don't know what they're doing. Don't you see how Jesus left with him on the cross? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's how you want me to handle it. Not only me, that's how he wants you to handle it. Folks talking about you, what's the way about it, Father? They didn't want to go this morning. They're not paying your bills. And if they weren't paying your bills, thank God. You know why? Because you're a man to that pay your bills. This folk that talked about me when I was in need, and why they were talking about me, God had them bring them bags of food. Why they were scandalizing me? Do y'all hear me? God will make your enemy feed you when you're hungry. Huh? There ain't nothing your God cannot do. Nothing. No question, kid. Can you believe it? Can't have that thought the heart. Can you still believe it? You can't trust your eyes because your eyes can fool you. The Bible says Jesus did not rule by the sight of his eyes. Your eyes can fool you. Your ears can fool you. Because sometimes you think you're talking to a friend. Huh? And they're just trying to find a place to put the line. And they all sweet with it. So, oh, how you doing, Reverend Ray? How you doing? Trying to find a place to put that line. But guess what? When you got the spirit of discernment, God will show you who the devil is. And say, boy, keep your distance. Because everybody that talk like a friend don't mean you no know good. Are you saved today? The Bible said, by the foolishness of preaching, men are saved. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Stop worrying about who the preacher is. Here's the deal. When you got Holy Spirit, you don't depend on the preacher no way. Talk to me. Talk to me. When you got Holy Spirit, you don't depend on you don't spend on preaching. You depend on Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit can use any lump of clay he wants. Did y'all hear what I said? The Holy Spirit can use any lump of clay he wants to. Because one day he used a donkey. He made the donkey preach to the prophet because the prophet acted like he didn't have no sense. Huh? God can use the bird to preach to you and tell you to stop whining. Them birds out there ain't got no refrigerator. Can't go in Walmart and buy and they out there singing every day. You mess around, got one cracker left, and you're whining like God done forsaken you. Jesus said, if you don't take care of them birds, he will take care of you. The birds don't be out there whining. They'll be out there singing God's praise. Let everything they have breath. Yeah, the preacher be begging, I be begging, I sure do. I'm supposed to beg. I'm supposed to beg. If you don't believe it, read Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Paul said, I beseech you, I'm begging you. Therefore, brother, that you, by the, by the mercy of God, that you present your body, what? Live and sacrifice. Paul said, look, in view and light of all that God has done for you, I beg you to give yourself to Jesus. We're not begging you to do it because Jesus gave himself for you. The Bible said, while we were sinners in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You might not know Jesus now, but God don't want you to die that way because if you die that way, you're on your way to hell. God wants you to know him. You can't know him based on what your mama said. You can't know him based on what your daddy said. You got to have your own testimony. The Bible said that the the Lord say so. And being religious and memorizing scripture ain't gonna work for flip. The devil memorized scripture. He just ain't gonna use it. He ain't gonna live it, but he'll twist it up in your mind, make you think you're on the way to because you know some word. You got to know the word, not just some word. And the word is God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever evil should not have ever have everlasting life. I said I was a big day. I'm still big. Everybody standing. If you're not saved, you can be saved. You don't walk off from God, God wants you back. If you're not living for God, you need to rededicate yourself. Today is a good day to rededicate yourself to God. 
rededicate means you know you ain't living the way you're supposed to be living. And you know that needs to be a change in your life. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now through my words saying, come. You can't, you can't do life by yourself. You know though, the folk you said, do you. Huh? Do you. You don't know what it means to do you. You were created to do you. You was created to do God's will, not yours. Don't let these lying words of the world lead you to hell. You're not created to do you. You don't even know what doing you was about unless you know God. If you want to really do you, you got to first do Jesus. You got to give him your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And then Jesus said he's going to lead you in a path that's right for you. Anybody need prayer?